The Seinet Salo Community Center, built in Finland by Alvar Aalto between 1949 and 1952. In the far north of Europe, in the middle of Finland, in a region of forests and lakes a few hundred kilometers from the Arctic Circle. For more than a hundred years, a small community had lived on Sainetsalo Island beside a large timber mill. In 1945, after the ravages of six years of war, the country needed to be redeveloped. The mill started up. The small town needed new facilities. The communist municipality organized an architectural competition to design a town hall. Taking advantage of his good relations with the town council and the support of the business, the winner was Alvar Alto. He was the foremost Finnish architect of his time. Alvar Alto, with Le Corbusier, was one of the instigators of the modern movement. Two buildings made him internationally famous. The sanatorium at Paimio, finished in 1933, and the Vipuri Library that was opened in 1935. He also designed furniture, but he was not a theoretician, far from it. The creator invented paper for architectural designs. As far as I'm concerned, using it for anything else is a waste of paper. The town of Seinetsalo is deep in the forest. This little community of 2,000 inhabitants had a modest project for a town hall, some accommodation for the civic employees, a few shops and a library all in one complex. Alvar Alto saw this as a double challenge. To show the superiority of civic building over commercial building, one of his favorite themes, and to build in the middle of the trees an urban monument inspired by the ideal city of the Italian Renaissance. Central Finland often made me think of Tuscany, the cradle of hillside towns. For me, the town built on the side of a hill was almost a religion, an illness, a madness. The hillside town is the purest of all forms, the unique and natural urban form. Dreaming of Mantegna's painting and Tuscany, Alvar Alto created an artificial hill that he surrounded by four main buildings. He flattened this mound to make a raised central patio. A square tower topped this quadrilateral. Two stairways gave access to the patio. On the side of the main street was a large set of granite steps, making a majestic entrance to the town hall premises. On the other side was a grass-covered earthen stairway. This empty space at the heart of the building, the raised patio, transformed a simple municipal building into an urban constituent like a little district without streets or avenues. This image was emphasized by the singular treatment of the volumes. Each wing of the building was given an irregular geometry by the use of setbacks, cantilevers, or oblique walls so that the whole design evoked the tensions and complexity of an urban landscape.
A building is like an instrument. It has to absorb all the positive influences and intercept all the negative influences that might affect people. A building cannot do that unless it is treated with the same finesse as the environment it stands in. In Senet Salo, brick is one of the architect's instruments. A traditional material in Northern Europe, but disdained by the modern movement, which preferred concrete. What Alvar Alto liked about this material is that each brick is unique. Each wall is a composition that expresses the talent of the craftsman. Their savoir-faire can still be seen in the 15 mm setback pointing that made play with light and shade, in the variations of rhythm, in using the 5% of burned black or chipped bricks that were normally rejected on inspection. Here they make a contented statement in this wide band that renders the blind walls of the tower more human and unifies the aspect of a disparate program. This allowed for seven dwellings for civic employees, five shops, a library, five offices and two meeting rooms for the town hall. Each element of this program occupies one side of the quadrilateral, single-story buildings that can be walked around on the outside. The shops and offices, dwellings, and the library. The major component reached upwards, the tower of the town hall ten meters higher than other parts of the building. When the councillors asked him why the town hall tower had to be 17 meters high, Alto replied that the town hall at Siena was 16 meters high and that the Senat Salo town hall might as well be a meter higher. Apart from the pleasantry, Alto wanted to assert the superiority of civic buildings. It is not a tower, but a dominant mass on which reposes the most important symbol of government, the municipal council chamber. To give access to this symbol, the architect created a simple yet majestic approach in which brick took on the nobility of marble in an Italian palazzo. The council chamber is quite simple. It is square. The mayor's desk faces three rows of tables. The public sits at the back. The splendor of the place is in its height. It is not the volume of a council chamber, but that of a church, more than 10 meters to the roof held up by two huge beams. Originally, the architect had designed a series of half trusses, the traditional framework for a pitched roof. Then, this handyman of genius and lover of wood invented the butterfly beam. A main beam combining the effect of 16 secondary side beams. The prowess of a carpenter, but also a lesson in how to combine the strength of all in a common effort.
In Alto's preparatory sketches, the lines of force and the rays of light that shine on the counselors seem to form a strange hourglass shape. As if once combined, the forces became a radiance that enlightened the decisions. Decisions made after mature reflection for which Alto devised a careful setup with furniture made of wood and black leather and tables aligned classroom fashion. Each chair carried the names of the counselors who sat in it, as if to emphasize the responsibility and dignity of this duty. Nobody would forget who decided what. On the large blank wall facing the council members, the architect displayed a number of signs a picture of the island, the emblem of Finland, and a painting given by his friend, the communist painter Fernand Léger, who had to agree to the picture being rotated by 90 degrees. The niche in the brick wall had already been built. They told the painter the dimensions, but he mixed up width with height. The little window near Fernand Léger's picture and the large square bay opening to the north are masked by interior wooden openwork shutters. Like stained glass windows in a church, they obscure the view and keep the place in half light, an additional way of creating mystery and solemnity. From the outside, there is no clue to the simplicity of the square shape of the council chamber. On the contrary, the volume of the tower seems to be complicated. The slant of the reversed pitch roof lets melting snow and rain run toward the center, and the volume halfway up is attached on three sides and creates an image that is full of surprise and shadow play. This cantilevered gallery gives access to the council chamber with a long horizontal loophole through which the sun marks its passage across the inside walls. Opposite the loophole is a half ceiling with openwork to make a long cornice with concealed lighting. This ensures a sophisticated play of light by both day and night. The tower is an emblem, impressive but opaque. The other main facility of the community center is the long library, which is on the contrary, totally transparent a glass facade with wooden framing, a facade turned towards the sunlight. It has a long open plan without any interior partitions. The sloped roof sits on concrete beams, the only place where Alvar Alto shows the convictions of the modern movement. The only through space opens on the south side toward the trees and on the north towards the raised terrace. The variations in opacity and transparency, the diversity of the volumes, the work with proportions, all give a particular richness to the building. It is still a modest project by the municipality of Sainatsalo, but it is imbued with all of Alvar Alto's ambitions. This monument also embodies urban complexity and the dignity of a public effort. And the architect did not allow the least slight on his building. That is why one summer night in 1954, he threw stones to break the neon sign of a bank embellishing the facade. When he was interrogated by the police, he claimed that he acted in self-defense. The neon sign was an insult to his work. 
It was even a reversal of civic values in favor of commercial values. The bank removed its neon sign. The town retrieved its dignity, democracy its emblem, and the architect, once he had paid his fine, regained his work. The architect built more than just a part of the town. He created a landscape in which nature counted for as much as the buildings. Back in 1942, in a town plan for Senatsalo, Alto had envisaged a triangular layout, a public space bordered on each side with small lines of multiple dwellings. In 1949, he set his project for the new town hall at the apex of the triangle, symbolically set apart from the mill by this green open space. Industrial building and public building face to face. The mill is still there, but the office building that faced the town hall burned down. Of Alvar Alto's town plan, the only thing left facing each other are the chimney and the tower, and the triangle planted with great trees crossed by paths for walkers and cyclists, a piece of forest hidden in the town center. Alvar Alto considered that nature and buildings are two ingredients of a single landscape. They are not in opposition. They are interpermeable. They are part of the same composition. Because of the materials and the colors, of course, and also in the progression of spaces. Alvar Alto is making land art before it was invented, a skillful graduation of states of nature. The forest kept in its original state surrounding the community center, the grass and earth steps indicating a mastery of nature. The patio planted with grass and two brick pavements. The pond that recalls the lake. And finally the potted plants that make a winter garden in the two passages along the patio. These passages that are mostly open to the outside give citizens access to the town hall offices. It is a generous public space protected from wind and snow and cold. It also shows how practical the architect was. This brick bench alongside the window. A narrow gap divides it in two and separates the part that acts as a seat from the facade. The radiators are concealed beneath it. Citizens sitting beside the window are kept warm. People sitting against the wall are not forgotten. The lights are turned toward the outside and their reflections light the passage. The community center is a total creation that demonstrates the talent of Alto, this designer and creator of furniture. He preferred natural materials like wood and leather. The door handles are a masterpiece of fine strips of leather plated around twin brass stems.
Murat Salo, an island near Senat Salo on which Alto built a holiday home in 1952 that he called the Experimental House. In this period of experimentation, calculation, and utilitarianism, we have to believe in the decisive place for playing when we build a city for men, those big children. In our playhouse, we wanted to experiment with ideas that are not necessarily reasonable, certain, or even measurable. Experiment number one. There are no foundations to the house. It is sitting on the moraine from the glaciers. Experiment number two. Alto continued his reflection started when he built the town hall, and once again he used a tower plan, a square room surrounded by a gallery, but he reversed their functions. The access area corridor is the house. The big square room is a courtyard. The architect did away with the roof of the council chamber while keeping the slope of the load-bearing walls. Then he hollowed out the window and opened the wall to face the landscape. It is an atrium, an anteroom between the house and the neighboring scenery. Experiment number three. He explored the possibilities of brickwork and used some 50 different compositions on walls and floors. He reversed closed and opaque versions of the big council chamber. He opened the patio to forest, lake, and sky. To get to his experimental house, Alto designed a boat that he called No One is a Prophet in His Own Land a reflection on his bitterness over the criticism and polemics that beset him at the end of his life. As a famous architect, he became an institution and was charged with the most important projects, such as a huge concert hall, Finlandia, and the town plan of Helsinki. But the community center of the little town of Seinat Salo continues to embody urban planning and civic virtues for everyone. It is the proof that architecture can be at the service of us all.